putting YouTubers down, you profited from them. I can't with you, do your Oscar De La Hoya has casually disclosed additional details about Floyd Mayweather's ongoing case with federal agents. I mean, people know that Floyd is Floyd, and, and that's... While attempting to entice Shakur Stevenson, Oscar De La Hoya disparaged other promotional teams, including Mayweather Promotions, in hopes of bringing the WBC champion to his side. I will make that fight next, if Shakur calls me. I will make this fight. And plus, don't you remember you fought YouTubers? I when Floyd Mayweather was spotted at a basketball game in Maine, many dismissed the rumors of his captivity in Dubai, considering them to be falsehoods stemming from animosity. That's who he is. That's who he is. He's, he's a lowlife. That, that's, that's who he is. However, Oscar de la Hoya has resurrected the buried issue, not to recount it as a past event, but to make new allegations and reveal additional details. Exclusive. William Cepeda will fight Shakur Stevenson. He casually brought this up while inviting Shakur Stevenson for a discussion, possibly to negotiate a fight against Golden Boy fighter William Zappa, or to persuade him to sign with Golden Boy Promotions. Fight tomorrow. While making these remarks, Oscar de la Hoya casually mentioned Floyd Mayweather, revealing more details than the public previously knew. He also commented on Shakur Stevenson, who recently defeated Art Harutuni in a unanimous decision to retain his WBC lightweight belt. This was the first defense of the title Stevenson had won from Edwin de los Santos. Stevenson faced considerable pressure heading into the fight due to his performance against de los Santos, which had drawn criticism. Despite his victory, Stevenson was booed for his defensive style and fighting off the back foot. He later revealed he had entered the fight with a hand injury and was eager to secure a knockout. Although Stevenson displayed skill, landing sharp jabs and maintaining his strong defense, Arn Harutunian managed to absorb his punches and survive until the final bell. As the fight entered the final round, some fans left the stadium before its conclusion. Yeah. Yeah, he just walked on a blinding jab would do that. Very close with that softball. Yeah, be more offensive-minded. That don't mean they got to create your own. There were also some jeers from the crowd, which Shakur Stevenson attributed to Arkham Hurtunian's unwillingness to engage. Stevenson mentioned that he had turned down a $15 million deal with top rank for five fights and expressed his interest in exploring free agency. Following William Zapata's win over Giovanni Cabrera, De La Hoya had extended an invitation to Stevenson. Zapata, with a record of 31 wins, 27 by knockout, is eager for a title shot, potentially against Stevenson. De La Hoya praised Zapata's performance and emphasized the importance of making statements when you're the number one contender in every organization. He encouraged Stevenson to give him a call, expressing a desire to make a fight happen. Stevenson faces the challenge of finding a better deal elsewhere, having turned down $3 million per fight from top rank. Promoters now know what top rank is willing to pay him. Unless Stevenson secures a deal with the Saudis, it's hard to see where he'll get a big payday without changing his style. In potential fights against big draws like Gervonta Davis and Ryan Garcia, Stevenson would likely be the B-side. Even against Devin Haney, whose style resonates more with the public, Stevenson had turned down a 25% split to fight him at 135 pounds. As Stevenson's stock has fallen, earning him the nickname, shook her Twitter for his perceived excessive talking on social media. De La Hoya continues to woo him. In an interview, De La Hoya warned Stevenson into joining Floyd Mayweather's promotional team, making further efforts to bring him into Golden Boy promotions. He took a few shots because uh, he's, he's very awkward. He said, this is the best place for him to be. No one else can help him like we would. I know some people want him, but their fighters haven't been getting fights. That's what I've heard. And you know he isn't done with the federal agents. He's still dealing with the Dubai case. Clearly, Oscar de la Hoya is referring to Floyd Mayweather here and the issues surrounding Mayweather promotions. It was Jeff Mayweather, after Leonard Ellerby's departure, who spoke about fighters in Mayweather promotions not getting fights. Jeff Floyd's uncle shed light on how Ellerby managed the tumultuous relationship between Davis and Mayweather. When a reporter from the Mayweather Channel asked Jeff about Ellerby's handling of the Floyd Davis conflict, Jeff downplayed any animosity emphasizing the praise Ellerby consistently gave Davis for his accomplishments. Despite the disagreements between Floyd and Davis over the years, Ellerby has always acknowledged Davis's achievements. Conversely, Floyd has often taken subtle digs at Davis since the boxer left his promotion. The tension escalated to the point where Davis started rumors about Floyd being stuck in Dubai, with the duo openly clashing on social media platforms.
Um, I mean, if you Jeff acknowledged that it was indeed extremely tough for Ellerby to handle the situation. He highlighted that friends often want you to pick sides, but Leonard was smart enough not to do that and just kept it business-focused. Jeff noted that many young fighters have been complaining about not getting fights, a concern that adds to the complexities within Mayweather promotions. Richard Schieffer has been considered to take up Ellerby's old spot. Schieffer, a Swiss national who began his career in banking, worked with Oster de la Hoya and Golden Boy promotions from 2000 to 2016. He later started boxing promotions Ringstar Sports in Probellum with mixed results. Schieffer is seen as a good move due to his extensive experience, having been involved in major fights, including some of the biggest pay-per-view events with Mayweather. Given Schieffer's history of promoting great fights and his positive relationship with the former five-division champion, his appointment seems promising. However, Leonard Ellerby's departure appears to be linked to the feud between Floyd Mayweather and Gervonta Davis though one can't help but wonder if it played a significant role in his decision to leave. Very experienced and been involved in those big fights. Involved in one of the biggest fights in that's for it. Jeff Mayweather also discussed an internal crisis that may have contributed to the split between Floyd Mayweather Jr. and Leonard Ellerby. He mentioned that many young fighters in Mayweather promotions are complaining about not getting fights, as Ellerby spends more time with PBC, neglecting his primary responsibilities. Jeff expressed that he wasn't really surprised by this development, questioning if Richard Schieffer would take on this role without plans to elevate the promotion. Jeff noted that he has been hearing many young fighters say they aren't getting fights, but he has no idea who to blame. He emphasized that if fighters can't get work, they have to do something about it. Despite these issues, Jeff felt that bringing Richard Schieffer on board was a good move. While many fighters in Mayweather promotions may not be getting fights, that is not the case for Colonel Moten. At just 18 years old, the baby-faced assassin has advanced his career to four wins, three by knockout, under the mentorship of Floyd Mayweather Jr. Moten continues to impress, recently defeating Nikolai Ballin at the Honda Center in Anaheim, California. Moten's debut last year was highly anticipated, and he has continued to rack up wins, displaying advantages in both speed and power. He dropped Ballin in the first round before stopping him in the second. Moten, aware that his relationship with Mayweather puts a target on his back, is determined to shine and deliver great performances whenever he fights. In a statement provided to a prominent news source, Moten expressed, I know all eyes are on me with Floyd backing me, which puts a target on my back. I felt pressure my whole life, so this is nothing new to me. I'm used to it. I know I just have to show up and do what I do. I want all the young fighters under Mayweather Promotions banner to do the same. I'm committed to helping take fighters to the next level. Moten competed on the main card of the Nate Diaz vs. Georgie Mass Vital event, which aired on Fanu PPV and UFC Fight Pass. It was one of the biggest platforms he has been on so far. It felt great to be in there with such a huge crowd tonight, he remarked. Record-breaking numbers, so I'm proud of everyone involved. Let's continue working together. Absolutely, big things are in the future. The electric atmosphere inspired Moten to deliver his best performance. I put in a lot of work at the gym, and I knew it was going to pay off, he concluded. I'm eager to get back in the gym and keep working hard to put on another great show. Record-breaking numbers. So, family, you know, I'm proud of you guys, and let's continue to work together. Absolutely. Absolutely. Big things in the future. If Moten continues to dispatch opponents like he has been, stepping up against tougher competition, he could very well emerge as the next big star in boxing. He understands his own value but benefits from Floyd Mayweather's support, positioning himself strongly in the sport. Regarding the second point raised by Oscar de la Hoya about Shakur Stevenson's invitation to another promotional team, it was Floyd Mayweather who initially invited Stevenson to join Mayweather Promotions. Mayweather expressed his desire for Stevenson to face the best fighters in the lightweight division when asked about the top five fighters. According to Mayweather, Gervonta Davis stands out as the biggest puncher at 135 pounds, while Shakur Stevenson is regarded as the most skillful fighter without question. Best, um, I believe his contract. Floyd Mayweather discussed Shakur Stevenson's skillfulness, comparing him to Pernell Whitaker noting Whitaker's ability to outclass opponents despite not being the heaviest puncher. Mayweather expressed his ongoing support for Stevenson, aiming to elevate him further as his contract nears its end, 
hoping to arrange the fights Stevenson desires. Mayweather emphasized his positive encouragement and denied allegations related to a video sparking speculation about his Dubai case, clarifying his intentions regarding young fighters' financial success and real estate investments. Meanwhile, Oscar de la Hoya's efforts to recruit more fighters, amidst controversies like Ryan Garcia's suspension for failed tests and subsequent expulsion from the WDC, were also discussed. Always said great things about him, always pushed him to be great. And, um, we don't condone any form of racism. It's just wrong, De La Hoya stated to video reporters, addressing Ryan Garcia's disparaging remarks towards George Floyd. I've heard Ryan's going to rehab, and it's a step in the right direction, he added solemnly. Garcia, 25, has faced erratic behavior, particularly during the promotion of his fight against Devin Haney, where he later tested positive for Osterine, altering his victory to a no contest. De La Hoya, emphasized Garcia's non-racist character despite the controversy, attributing his behavior to possible substance use issues. He acknowledged reaching out to Garcia and supported his decision to seek rehabilitation. However, criticism has surfaced regarding De La Hoya's delayed intervention given Garcia's repeated red flags. De La Hoya expressed satisfaction with Garcia's decision to part ways with his manager and stressed the importance of positive influences in Garcia's circle moving forward. It's not good what he said, and, uh, you know. Regarding his own experiences with rehab, De La Hoya reflected, Other people wanting to send me, it never worked. You feel sorry for yourself, think people are against you. He commended Garcia's decision to enter rehab, stating, What Garcia is apparently doing to check himself into rehab is a good thing. You got to go yourself. Davis and Mayweather have had a complex relationship over the years, stemming from Mayweather's early mentorship and promotion of Davis. However, their association soared over time, leading to a split. Davis recently accused Mayweather of criticizing him and implicated him in a financial dispute allegedly leaving Mayweather stranded in Dubai. The controversy escalated on social media when Mayweather's remarks were interpreted as aimed at Davis, prompting a fiery response from Davis on Instagram, where it accused Mayweather of financial mismanagement and being unable to leave Dubai due to unpaid debts. This online feud intensified when Mayweather failed to appear for a scheduled exhibition rematch with Victor Ortiz in Mexico, further fueling speculation about financial issues. It's, it's a step in the right direction for him personally. Despite ongoing rumors, Mayweather has been active recently. He accompanied Kermo Moten to the ring for his fourth fight, attended a Clippers vs. Mavericks game in Las Vegas, and made headlines for donating $30,000 to a homeless individual in downtown Los Angeles. His presence at the AEW Double or Nothing event reaffirmed his ability to travel freely. The atmosphere at AEW Lowly was intense, especially during the Strickland vs. Cage match, which captivated the audience with its thrilling display. Strickland emerged victorious, retaining his championship to the delight of the crowd. Following his win, Strickland shared his celebratory moment with Mayweather, who was seated in the front row, further showcasing Mayweather's active and engaged presence in various events. That concludes our update for now. For the latest news, moments, events, and actions in the world of boxing, stay connected with us by subscribing to our YouTube channel. Don't forget to enable notifications to stay informed about our quality content releases. Until next time, take care.